Now, there are many influences on what makes us eat. So we don't always respond to a rumbling tummy. We eat for lots of different reasons. Now, some of the reasons that we eat are because of early influences, so in our childhood. So if we considered food to be comforting foods, foods that our parents fed us as a child, we might gravitate to those kind of foods, which are not always necessarily helpful. We might also eat because of the texture and particular flavours of food. So some foods, as we said a moment ago, are laden with salt and sugar, which makes them very addictive and at times very appealing. So we might gravitate to foods because of their chemicals within them. There's also the idea that actually sweets can be very addictive because they contain the right amount of chemicals that stimulate all of our taste buds that make us want more. So that might be a driver for us to be eating, so it would influence our food choices. The other thing is routines and habits. That sometimes we eat at 12 o'clock just because we've been told that it's lunchtime and you're meant to eat. But actually, if you're not hungry at 12 o'clock, then maybe you shouldn't be eating your lunch at that time. You should try and listen to the cues of your body and eat when you're hungry, rather than following a strong routine that maybe doesn't suit you as an individual. Remember that food can be very addictive, so sugar particularly has been likened to several drugs because it has very addictive properties. So you hear people saying that actually they're addicted to sugar and there is a grain of truth in that, that sugar can be very, very addictive. So that can be a reason that people eat sugar, less about desire and actually more about addiction. And also for social and cultural influences. So in many cultures, food is defined as love. And so people will often eat just to please other members of the household or again because of conditioning. So eating to keep other people happy rather than actually you being hungry. And I think the thing to understand is that there is much research into food and food influences. And it's understanding that much of this research is funded by someone trying to promote a particular product. So it's like saying that coffee is good for us just because the raw coffee bean has some chemicals in it that, are, that come from a plant. It doesn't always discuss the fact that there's caffeine in it and it's too stressful for your body, the caffeine. So remember that this research that's often promoted or behind certain foods that are not so helpful is funded usually by individuals that have got an invested interest in that product. So education really is key and it's really understanding you know, why people make the, cho the food choices that they do and exploring your relationship with food, keeping, keeping a food and symptom diary to try and really understand what's actually driving you to eat.